Hey guys, welcome to that panel show. Dan here. Mick here, hello. And the unmistakable sound of a 1970s electric mistress. Just ah. as we were getting warmed up to film, we were kind of playing some stuff, weren't really feeling it, and uh, it was because you had the electric mistress after, after the, the, dis- overdrive. the overdrive, and then you switched and put the mistress before the overdrive. Hello, ladies. Everything's beautiful. Happier days. Yes. Okay, yeah. all right. So we've been um, asked about... The Strymon Mobius a lot. We have indeed. What does Mobius mean, Mick? <laughs> I don't know, Dan. What does Mobius mean? Let's ask our good friend. Hey, Siri. Hang on. Bloody flight mode. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Here we go. Hey, Siri. What does Mobius mean? Checking. 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 Here is what I found. Take a look. No. Hey Siri. What does Mobius mean? Let me think about that. The definition of Mobius is German mathematician responsible for the Mobius strip 17901868. German mathematician responsible for the Mobius strip. So, something to do with maths, which means something quite complicated. Who knows what the Mobius strip is? Probably has significance beyond this. I, I dare say. Yeah. I dare say. I, I wonder if the German mathematician Mobius decided you could put all modulation pedals into one digital box. He decided that all modulation pedals were actually the same. Yeah. So they should all go into one box, and that was what the Mobius strip was about, apparently. There you go. <laughs> Mystery solved. <laughs> right. Anyway, so for anyone who's been living under a rock, for the last however many years. Strymon makes large format, and I say large format, that big. So rough, roughly 2.31 times the size of a Boss C to Wazza Chorus. Um, timeline. Yes. Every delay in one box, Dan's favorite delay. Mm-hmm. Uh, big Sky. Lush, beautiful. Millions of reverbs. Crazy, crazy reverbs. Uh, in, in one big box like that. And of course, Mobius, which is modulation pedals, which, as you can see from the front panel, are chorus, flanger, rotary speaker, vibe, phaser, filter, form... Format. Formant. Vocal filters. Oh, okay, nice. Vintage trem, pattern trem, auto swirl, destroyer, which is a bit crusher, <laughs> and quad quadrature, which is a load of other stuff. Very good. Technic- but, that's the technical explanation. Yes, but we thought we'd, we'd concentrate on the main food groups. Phasers, flanges, vibes, chorus, and rotary. We'll have a quick look at the other stuff too. Yeah. Because it's very cool. But, but we just want to see, we've got some of our faves here. I just want to see, how does it go? Yeah, because everyone says, oh, you know, why don't you just do, why, don't, why do you bother with all that stuff? Why don't you just get one pedal that can do it all? And as we'll probably conclude at the end of this video there are many reasons why you would want to do that Mm -hmm. and maybe some that you wouldn't but we don't know because i don't know about you dan i've never put the mobius against what we have here and had a listen okay so it's as close it's as close as that pedal show will ever come to this pedal versus that pedal yeah because as we know there are no answers any better questions i got one right yeah right Let's start off with. Let's start off with the. Well, we may as well, should we start with the mistress? Seeing as that's where. All right. Let's start with the that's mistress. That's where we were. All right. So. This is. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful noise. But it's this sound.
That is a special noise. It's, it's a special... Just have a play with that. <laughs> just have a play. For anyone interested, this is a Collings 360LT, which I happen to... It's kind of passing through my hands at the moment, as guitars tend to do from sometimes. And uh, it's nice. Golf all pickups. Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah so I'm just uh, getting to know it. Extremely cool. Just so, so, so good. Um, I first heard about this when I was looking at what David Gilmore was using. Um, actually, no, I very first heard about it from a producer I was working with, and he, this, this is like the pedal that got me into pedals. Yeah. This in the CE one got me into pedals. Just going to check. This is still running. Yes, it is. Happy days. Uh, you know, I used to have racks and. That stuff coming out the yin yang, and then the producer hands me this and says, "Try this out." Plugged it into an amplifier, and I'm like, I couldn't work it out. I couldn't work it out how this thing that at the time was thirty odd years old <laughs> sounded better than all the state of the art stuff. Yeah, yeah. Just plugged in this little box, this noisy little box, and it just had this thing. And I was from that moment on, I was gone. Every time we feature it, he gets all excited. I do, I do. I guess and you exactly. really love it. And normally what happens then in the comments section, thanks for all the comments, by the way. Uh, uh, and I'll mention Thomas Stonehewer, and I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. I'm pretty sure Thomas is one of the people I remember getting onto eBay pretty quick and buying one and getting it back and being all excited. Yeah. So, uh, oh, yeah. It's just magical. It's just magical. So, all right. Come on then, let's see. How does... Casting my emotion aside for a moment. Can you work this? I'll have a go. Yes. I've got I've got a, a, a kind of consolidated version of the manual. It's, yeah, yeah. It's which fairly... has, has a guide to the uh, the controls and a few other things there. Okay. Kill me. <laughs> so, my electromistress has got three knobs, all right? And pretty much in any position, even at the most extreme settings, it still has that thing. I've got speed, depth, level yep. here, and two different parameters which change per um, engine. Yeah. So let's go to the. Let's see. Let's see if we can then, because presumably there's a load of other stuff that's hidden that means you can change EQ and all that. But let's let's okay. not let's not get into that. Let's right. just see what happens. I'll play the guitar. So you let's fiddle. Yeah. <laughs> This one's kind of clearer sounding, got a bit more top end. That's the, the thing about the mistress, is the top end. Is there any? Can we? Is there any EQ tweaky business in there? Well, so we I'm going about? into I'm going into the um, to the 
parameter Help. thing in here. I need somebody. And I would say no, that is that's the sound of that engine. Okay, all right. Have you got it on mode silver? I do have it on mode silver, I believe. Mode silver is the classic silver box flanger. Mode silver. Yep. Right. Yep. Uh, then there's grey. Mm. Tell me, does that have negative regeneration? No. Doesn't have positive regeneration? No. Doesn't have through zero? No. No, so it's none of those, so it's definitely silver. Yep. Okay, feedback, manual, yes, you're correct. Groovy. Groovy? Yep. So that's... I'm going to pick up a, a more familiar guitar. Okay. Um, it's a great guitar, that. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, what's your name? This is a guitar. I thought Dan's got a, a red guitar made by Fender, so I thought I'd see if I could find one as well. Nice. Made in Japan. Reissue. Yeah, not quite. Not quite. Um, made in Coro... Uh, no. <laughs> Made in Fullerton, California. I was going to say Corona, California. Made in Fullerton, California in 1960. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. In 1960, Fender Stratocaster had been refinished, loaned to us via Pete Lewis, who uh, ages ago, um, Dan and I went and played some vintage Fenders, and uh, he was trusting... I tried to steal a couple. Yeah, tr trusting enough to lend us this via one of his friends, and um, I can sort of feel my heart racing just talking about it, because it is quite a big deal. <laughs> So, ready for the uh, anti-climax, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. It sounds great. If you listen to an electric mistress, you will perceive a lot of bottom end goes. Yep. It's noisy, sounds thin. So it seems to me that they've tried to fix those things, but in actual fact, they're not things that need to be fixed. So there's no global high pass or anything that enable you to no, get not past a, all not of that? that? No. You, there's no EQ in here. You know, so it's, I mean, it's a lot quieter. Yep. Um, but it's, 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 you know, we were asking that box to do a very, very specific yeah, job. I think it sounds great. It sounds great. It sounds sounds great. great. You've been listening to that for the last however long, Such so long there's no you're you're not a, an objective viewpoint at no, this point because 
you've got used to the sound of that and you love it. It's your second favourite stroke, first favourite effects pedal of all time. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Yeah, so I'm... I have a different... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, before we move on, I'd just like to make a point about Candy Apple red finishes on Fender guitars. Um, a slight interlude here. Check this out. Hold that up. Anyone who likes Fender guitars will know that uh, Candy Apple Red was a custom colour in the 19, uh, well, from 1959-ish, um, uh, which is made up of a base coat of either silver or gold. See the gold there? Yeah. So yours, the, yours is gold, yeah? Yep. This one's silver? Oh, yes. Oversprayed with translucent red. Nice. Okay. How cool is that? Very, very This is cool. a refin. That's a custom shop. Nice, candy apple red. Here we go. Little interlude. Mix interlude. Uh, <laughs> what was the last one? <laughs> Mix moans. Mix moans. No moans yet, but we did have an interlude. Uh, right, okay, moving on. All right. Phaser. Phaser. We can do phaser. Now, sad face for Woo! Dan. Sad face for Dan today because if, if the C1 and Electric Mistress are joint one, on your favourite pedals of all time, where does that come? Number two. So it's yeah, that would be number three actually. If it was a race. Yeah, but they they they're on the podium together. They both okay. get gold. It's it's okay. It's if photo finish and they can't tell. So this the, is the up judges there. have had to step in and say, guys, <laughs> you both you both there. You both there. So this is a, a 1974 script logo phase 90. Dan has two obviously, and uh, one of them is missing in action, which is. One reason for the sad face, and the other reason for the sad face is this one doesn't work. <laughs> Which is uh, there we go. Vintage. It's a kick in the ball. Yeah, buy vintage pedals, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, so that wonderful. Uh, um, what would you call that? My brain is just gone. Serendipity. It's, 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 it's absolutely that phaser, which is glorious, but it is. From 1974, so it's 43 years old. Same as me. Um, and it's mad. Isn't one, it? it's, it's absolutely crazy. 57 one of the things, years old. Oh, mate. Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy. But one of the things about vintage electronics, which I, I sometimes struggle to get my head around, you know, the components that are inside these electronics are not designed to last forever. Hmm. I can, I can see that guitar being looked after, lasting another couple of hundred years. You know? Why not? There's nothing in there that's gonna, if it's looked after and stuff, it's like a piece of furniture, they mm. can last hundreds and hundreds of years. Yeah. The electrolytic capacitors in these things will only last 25, 30 years out of push, and then they break down, this is what they do. Especially on some of the, the components that made, um, the way they made them back then, they're not designed to last forever. So a lot of vintage electronics, it's going to do that. It's going to break down. And mm. this is another big box ticked for, for, this, for the Mobius. Yeah, yeah, you know. absolutely. Come on then. What's the, right, what's so, the, this is not a joke, by the way. What's the difference between a phase, one, phase 90 and a phase 100? The phase 100 has more stages of phasing. And you can also switch between... This is a very cool thing here. So if we... Um, you have a flick around the different phasing sounds. So it's, it, I always thought it was like going between a phase 90 and a phase 45 between these things, but it's not. The phase 100 has its own sound, which I love, it's, it's fantastic. Sorry, you're saying. <laughs> Keep going because I've seen BB King do this. Okay, we're going to talk about this while Dan changes the string. It may end up. It may end up getting fast forward. Back in the game? Back in the game. Nice. I was making a, a point there, but it doesn't matter. 
What was the point? I had no idea. I was hoping you might remember. Oh yeah, it was. You were talking about uh, we were talking about phase. 100s, you were playing it, and we were gonna oh, okay. decide which is the one that's closest to the phase 90. Yeah, it's kind of that, but one, it, isn't it? It has the same thing. It's a number of people's favorite phaser, including John Frusciante and Jerry Garcia. Okay, also happens to be my favorite flavor of Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Jerry Garcia. Oh, okay, right, 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 right. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> uh, All right, so right, so that is that is the phase 100. Ah, okay, so get onto the phaser then. You so better believe what it. we didn't say about the flanger is that obviously we're comparing it to Electric Mistress. The Mobius does a bunch of other different types of flanger as well. It does uh, the jet plane ones and it also does the through zero. Yes. So it does a lot in addition to the Electric Mistress, but that's what we were comparing it to. Anyway, back to the phase 100. Now, it tells me here in the uh, Mobius user manual that yes. you can have... Two, four, six, eight, twelve, or sixteen stage phasing. Wow. Okay. Check that out. So well, set we the six mode stage for this one. How many? Six. six. Six stage. Okay. So if you go to the mode, the if you can select the mode. Uh, let's see. Mode, two stage, four stage. Right. Okay. Let's go through. Let's, them. Yeah. Here. Uh, the, the, in addition to 16 stage, you've got Barber Pole. Nice. Literally no idea. Um, and you can also have sine or tri waveforms. Okay. Mm. You can have lots of stuff. Yeah. So six stage is the same as the phase 100, yeah? Yeah. And this Come on then. We have the big one on. So... Can you do me a favour? Can yep. you can you find in the uh, phaser? Can you find something that says something like um, headroom? Yep. There you go, and turn that up as maximum it's as you can. Full. Okay. So can we just turn that down while you're playing, or, or yeah, you play and I'll turn it down. Yep. Can you make it so that I can turn it down? Yep. There you go. Great. Thank you. 
Okay, the reason I the reason I wanted to do that is because clearly the Mobius sounds not as bright and as clear mm -hmm. and as doesn't sound to have sounds like it has the same amount of dynamic range to me. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if that headroom thing was set low okay. and therefore it was either crunching up or, or just shutting down a bit. Right. Um, but it doesn't seem to be the case. Okay. So again, to me, and we've got no pre or post gain turned on in G2. Right. It has a regeneration in there, which is the same as the regener well, that feedback on the Musitronics, um, the oh, okay. phasor yeah. two. So that feeds a certain amount of signal back into the um, from the output to the input, which gives you that, which is what the flanger does. Um, it gives you that sort of jet plane thing. So. It's interesting, isn't it? They... Oh man. Let's try with a bit of overdrive. And just that on the movies. What are we what are we what are we not understanding? Keep playing. Just sounds a bit like we're the thing sounds cloaked. Yeah. Compared to the MXR. Yeah, and that's that's just you know. I'm just going to make the point again about G2's pre and post gain. If you just switch the MXR on a sec, you'll see a load of lights come on indicating that there might be pre and post gain. There isn't, because they're inactive unless pre and post gain is turned on. Which these little blue lights here. Yeah, so just before anyone says, oh yeah, but you've got loads of pre and post gain going, we haven't at all, and there are no additional buffers or anything like that. So I'm just trying to work through the questions before they get asked. Very good, I like it. Is that all right? Yeah, perfect. perfect. Okay, All right. that was a phaser. All right. Where should we go next? To the rotary. All right. This gives me a chance to play cold shotgun. Rotary. Can I just ask a quick question? Yes. Can I raise a practical question? Yes. Is the overdrive in the same pos position? Yep. 
So yeah, it's, it's after. So everything. it's after everything. Yep. Okay, cool. Nice, liking these sounds. What were you hearing? I was too busy enjoying the sound. <laughs> um, I I like the I like the the radio in here. This again, there's a there's a. Did it have its own drivey thing built into it? Here it does. So it's kind of pre-drive. You gotta. Uh, sometimes on a um, Leslie type thing, you would hear that when you'd hear yeah. drive because yeah. the amp's driving. As me. Checks his sheet. Yeah, I would just like apologise to everybody that I haven't stored all this information in my brain. But my brain's too full of this guitar. <laughs> you uh, are forgiven, sir. Yeah, so horn level, preamp drive, slow rotor speed, acceleration, mic distance. Okay, let's, let's pretty just cool. check the mic distance. That's the, on the depth control. Oh, okay. Right. Um, what you'll notice... Uh, if you haven't already watched it and you're interested in rotary speaker type sounds, watch our real Leslie versus um, rotary pedals. Oh, man, that was we, so we, good. we concluded in that video that no pedal ever made sounds like a, a real Leslie. What happens when you put a mic on a Leslie is the closer you have it, well, actually, you would have two mics. But the closer the mics are, Traditionally, you would have two mics. There are other ways to do it. You could have three if you mic the bass as well. Anyway, the closer you put the mics, the more um, pronounced... The more drastic that effect is. Yeah, whereas yeah. obviously as you draw the mics away, you don't get so much of the immediate Doppler effect past the mics, so that should be happening in the okay. kind of Mobius. Let's try that.
Very good. That's that sound. That's that sound. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Right. Uh, moving on. Moving on. By the way, DLS Rotospin, we would have included... What would we have used? Probably would have used the uh, vent too. Mm. But it's gone. It is. It's gone back. But this is cool. Yeah, it's lovely. Really good, in fact. Yeah. It's very nice. Okay. Where are we up to? Uh, we're up to Vibe, I think, now. Anyone who doesn't know, Vibe is based on uh, the Univibe pedal made famous by Jimi Hendrix and Robin Trower in the in the mid late sixties, late sixties. Mm -hmm. um, it's a multi stage phaser, right? Exactly. And it's not a phaser like this. It's a it's a phaser, but it just it, the difference is it uses a photo lab a lab cell to do the to do the stuff. <laughs> it's this. So, There's a mini hand inside grabbing. A throbbing photo cell. That's what's happening. That's why they can't send them across seas anymore. That's right. <laughs> because they just can't find the little hands. It's cruel. You can't. You just can't. Yeah. yeah can't it's uh, ROHS non-compliant. Some European law. That's why, that's why we prefer the Brexit people. Yeah, yeah. Get out of there. What we want is little hands in pedals doing this on a photo cell. Mm. So that's what's in the Mojo vibe. There's two modes on a, on a vibrato. This one is the only one anyone cares about. This one, not so much, um, because of this. Yes. If you put the speed up and the intensity up. So what that it, is... It's a vibrato. It's a vibrato, it, It's not exactly. what people use them for. Q8000 comments going, I use my vibe for vibrato. For vibrato. Good, good for you. They're, they're kind of known for this. That's what they're known for, and I'm not going to play any more of that. So, of course, absolutely immortalised by Hendrix on yeah. on a few classic recordings, yeah. Machine Gun. That. Um, I think we've done two shows on Vibes, haven't we? Going through very various different vibe pedals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you wanted more on vibes, please watch those shows. So let's see where we are with the Mobius then. Right. Thank you. 
But when the headroom was down before, and I hit it hard, turn the headroom up, Not bad at all. Yeah. I like the chewiness of the Mojo vibe. Yes. So uh, I don't know if you, you may have clocked that while Dan was doing it. If you didn't, I'll explain now. He was going through various uh, parameter things that you could change, one of which was a low frequency control, mm -hmm. some sort of LFO, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one was the headroom, which really makes it sound squashed down and distorted or present and loud and loads of headroom. Mm -hmm. uh, you could change the wave shape, did I see? Yes, you could move the move the center point of the wave shape. Which is really nice if you watch the vibe show that we did. Um, a couple of the units we used enabled you to change the shape of the vibe, especially the called new vibe, which had kind of a, you could change it Crazy kind of, thing. yeah, which was really awesome. cool. So, so that's good. useful. Um, like the Mojo vibe, the Mobius does have two modes. It has chorus and vibrato mode because it is based on the classic 60s yeah. univibe, so yeah. it's, you know. That's cool. That's cool. That's my favourite one yet, I think. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. So, moving along. This is the big one then. Yeah. Very nice. Um, we've chosen the C to Wazza because we've done, again, we've done a chorus video, and if you want to watch the chorus video, it compares the C to Wazza with an old C2, with a C1, uh, with a bunch of other choruses that we really like. Mm. And we have pretty much decided that the C2 Wazza is as good as any. As good as any modded C2. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it doesn't, it's not quite the same as a C1, but it's. Closer to a C1 than a C2 is. Yeah, we could have compared it with the C1, but the C1's got its own thing. It does that distortion thing. It's kind of... It's so rock and roll. It's just so good. Yeah, so... So many more people are aware of the C2 and it's kind of classic Bucket Brigade 70s yep. chorusing sound. Yep. So the good news about the Mobius is it does... Five different choruses. Wow. Okay. So if you can, at the parameter level, uh, select D Bucket. Right. Parameter. Mode. Mode. D bucket. D tune. D, 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 D bucket. There you go. So D bucket, um, it says here is, D bucket mode covers the sound of classic analog choruses from the 1970s. What do you use a D bucket for? <laughs> to carry the water? <laughs> so what do you use D bucket for, not what do you use a D bucket for? Exactly. Yeah, what do you yeah. use D bucket for? Okay. To carry the water. Fine. Turn the depth knob to 12. <laughs> Right, depth up to 12 o'clock. Uh, and the mix parameter to 80%. To 80? Yep. Yep. Now, this apparently sounds like a C1. If you turn the mix back to halfway, this is apparently the sound of the first compact 
pedal co uh, chorus. Nice. I'd love to meet Keith Scott. Keith Scott is Brian Adams' guitar player and I'd love to meet him. He's brilliant. He's amazing. Okay, that's not bad. I think that's pretty impressive. That's not bad. Let's just let's just hear a couple of those other modes a sec. Okay. So if you find the, the mode uh, parameter again, yep. there is... Um, if you, Dan will just flick through them. There's D-Bucket, which is a Bucket Brigade chorus. There's Multi-D-Bucket, which is presumably like a dual by analog man type by chorus type yeah, thing. Yeah, play. And then there's a vibrato, a detune and a digital chorus. So right. if you just run through them. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, well look, that's probably concluded the main business for today. Yes. Which is going through flanger, phaser, rotary speaker, vibe and chorus mm -hmm. as the sort of main food groups of modulation which most people use, would you agree? Yep. And clearly there's a lot in it. And it's very... Oh, my stomach's going. Must be, must be food time. And it's, you know, there's a huge amount of um, adjustability and all that, not to mention the fact you can MIDI it up and therefore if you're using something like a uh, loop switcher like G2 or indeed you program presets in, exactly. state in the bleed and obvious, you've got everything in one place, all in one pedal for the occasional. Uh, so, for example, if you only use flanger in, in one song, hmm. there's clearly hardly any point having... An electric mistress. Yeah. Unless. Yeah. 
unless it's your unless second favourite pedal of all exactly, time. Exactly, exactly. But to people. be fair, I don't have the electric motors on my board. No. You know, it's. I'll use it in the studio. I'll use it here, but it's just too. It's, now it's too valuable to take out. Yeah. You know, I take the um, the little. Uh, lady, lady. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and it's fine, but it's not that. And I think that's the point. You know, it's not that. Nothing's that. You know, asking that to be that is a bit. Yeah, although I I, I think it got it got closer to the certainly the chorus and the rotary sounds. Yeah, and than it did the phaser and the flanger for me. In certain in certain ways, I actually preferred the rotary. Yep. The the one overlying thing for me yep. is the top end. Yep. Uh, so. No dry analog through. No dry analog through. I knew you was going to say that. Yeah, yeah. And because you can't, if you're doing a modulation thing, you're, you're modulating the whole signal. Mm. There's no, there's nothing to add it on top. It's got to modulate the whole signal. So the yep. whole thing has to be digitized. Fine. Um, but when you hear the presence Mm. And the the crazy fidelity in the top end of something like the mistress, mm. and then asking the digital pedal to do the same thing, yeah, without getting clock noise and everything up there because, you know, that's you've got to have you've got to filter that so you get rid of all that sort of extraneous digital noise. Um, but it look it sounds great. I I put these on loads of boards. I know loads of guys that use them. Really high end players, and one thing. So we're using amps today that have a lot of clean headroom. Yeah. The, the the top end in the AC30 is crazy. I love that. And there's plenty available in the in the Bravado Absolutely. as well. One it's, of, one yeah, of the yeah. key things about the Bravado, which makes it really good, is it's got a ton of headroom and as much presency high end as you as you could ever want. Yeah. I love that. Um. I. Just the way. An amplifier that has a really lovely presence, the way it feels, especially with the Telecaster, yeah. it's just, I love it. Um, so that's that's the one overriding thing for me. But saying that, I can certainly work with those sounds. There's mm. not a, you know, and you can see why guys are out there who have to do, you know, loads of that sort of stuff in a session gig or whatever. That's why you see Timeline, Big Sky, Mobius. Mobius. All midied, one touch, Boom. every parameter changed. Yep. Okay, all right, look, so before we finish, there's more stuff that the Mobius does. Hopefully we've given you an idea that uh, in, in addition to comparing it to these classic pedals, there are other versions of those also in the Mobius, but in addition to that, there are, there's other stuff as well. Of course. Which is? Well, so this is cool. Have a look at the format filter. So this is like a, it does the vowel sounds. Okay. All right, so have a play of this. A terrible major minor problem there, but uh, Tommy anyway. Tommy had a six string at home. Uh, He's holding it. In his hock, in hock, wasn't it? It was in hock. It was in hock, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, okay. Tommy's got his six string in hock. I've never. I've He's never. holding on when he used to make it talk so tough. So tough. According to my friend Neville, uh, one of the flattest bends ever. That Richie Sambora. Really? I don't see the problem. I think it sounds great. Sounds awesome. Anyway, moving on. Okay, vowel right. sounds. Uh, vintage vintage trim. trim. <laughs> Oh, 
Bordeaux as well. Before we move on from the vintage trend, oh, okay. would you mind just doing me a favour? This is another slight tangent. Could you find the harmonic tremolo mode? Harmonic we've, tremolo. we've done we've done shows on tremolo before, and people go, why don't you ever talk about harmonic tremolo? Harmonic tremolo was a feature of certain Fender amps yes. in the 50s. Yes. Maybe even in the 60s, I don't know, is the honest answer. Yep. Um, and it has a particular phase. So have you found it? Yep. Excellent. See? Do you know how much tremolo is? Go on. It separated frequencies and it would, would uh, do like a top end and a lower end frequency and ah. do a different... So you get some modulation, presumably. Yeah. Literally play tremolo all day. Moving on, what did you say was next? Okay, uh, there's patent trim, auto swell. Let's, uh, you know, auto swell. Eh, let's do the destroyer. Bit crushing. So good. I can remember when, sorry, this will be the last tangent because this is turning into a very long video. When these kind of pedals started coming out, there was one called the Beautiful, Truly Beautiful Disaster. Yes. We got it for review on Guitarist magazine and sent it back because we thought it was, it was broken. broken. Yeah. True story. <laughs> I'm buying the, one. I'm the, buying one for that noise alone. That's the best you'll ever hear a genuine 1960 Fender Stratocaster. Sick. Leo, I think it's broken. Can I have a new one? <laughs> I love that. All right, quadrature. It is pattern trim, auto swell, meh. Uh, destroyer, we just did that, loads of bits. Okay, select, uh, the quadrature machine handles another spectrum of signal corruption featuring quadrature oscillators, AM amplitude modulation or frequency modulation. Like a tremolo, crazy wide speed range, uh, also commonly known as a ring modulator. Okay, so uh, okay. AM mode in quadrature is a ring modulator. Oh, yeah. Okay, quadrature, we weren't having much luck with that, so uh, maybe Strymon's own demo will do and that is a wrap yeah very interesting clearly loads of sounds in one pedal MIDI control yep I don't know if it's a no-brainer because there's probably other H9 yeah Look, you know I think one of the because I, I have all the originals, and so I'm, I'm listening with a real critical ear, however, that on its own is 
amazing. You know, it's the great. There are great sounds in there. If I'm doing a gig and I need a a whole host of different things, and but I just needed one pedal, great. Like the, bit, like the bit crusher for all your sensitive singer songwriting oh, gigs. God, that's awesome. Yeah, I have to get one of those. And then I turned and said. <laughs> Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. Just want to say a massive thank you to all of our patrons on Patreon. Thank you guys so much. Um, crowdfunding for creatives. Bing. There you go. Also, massive thank you to our preferred retailers. Uh, in the USA, that is Rift City Guitar. In UK and Europe, that is Anderson's Music. And in Australia, it is Pedal Empire. Fantastic. And we have some new T-shirts happening. So if you want to pop on to thatpedalshowstore.com and buy yourself a shirt or a cup or a beanie or a, a I, I, nose ring wear. I haven't actually told you this my father-in-law right. recently was having some treatment uh, in a hospital and he was turning up for his uh, treatment that week next to him guy in that pedal shows no way yeah, yeah. oh man that's awesome yeah not the best environment in the world but hey it was pretty cool very <laughs> good so yeah thank you guys so much that's awesome and please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Yes. All right. All right, guys. Uh, have a great week, and we'll see you next Friday. Cheerio. Cheers, guys. Bye.